Hello everyone, thank you for coming to my YouTube channel. Today I want to speak about where the name for my channel comes from. And that will lead us into the topic of this video, which is stuttering. But um, the name of my channel, basically, it's Mr. Move and Speak. As you can see, the MR, those are the initials of my name. And the move uh, refers to the movement that I have for my Tourette's, for my Tourette's syndrome. And the speak part is the uh, speech disfluencies that I experience. You may have noticed in some of my videos that I either pause a lot or sometimes it'll seem like I either forgot what I want to say, which isn't the case. What's really happening is that I'm blocking on a word. Um, and that usually shows up as like excess pausing or pausing in the middle of a sentence. Um, and it's just really annoying. I've experienced speech disfluencies uh, since I was at least in middle school. I don't think it happened in elementary school, which is when my tics uh, first arose. Um, the stuttering, which is a word that I fear to say. Any word that begins with an S is really hard for me to say. Almost any word that begins with an S. And some other syllables and vowels too. But it really depends. But my point is that... Um, Many people would not know that I have a speech disfluency, um, which is, by the way, a term that you should look up. I don't want to define it wrongly, but I'm using the term speech disfluency to refer to speech blocks and to refer to to st stuttering, <laughs> which is, like I said, it's it's a it's a word that I have trouble saying, and it's really frustrating for me. And many people, people that are close to me would be very surprised to know that I have this, that I have this problem because I hide it very well. It's not something that's prevalent in my life and it it just kind of rears its ugly head at random points which really it makes my life very hard. Like it makes things like making phone calls very hard. It makes things like ordering food in public or I mean any like any time that that you have to speak I mean, can you imagine what it's like to not know what's going to happen when you speak? Like, there's very little consistency in my life other than misery. <laughs> you know, which which isn't necessarily 100% true. I mean, I have... I don't want to be too negative. I do have ma many wonderful things in my life. But I just want to convey to you how these symptoms like Tourette's and speech disfluencies and speech blocks... They could kind of overshadow the positive elements of my life and they could lead to self-esteem problems, which I definitely have. But going back to my history, um, I first, I just remember being in middle school and having like panic attacks whenever, remember when, I mean, this never really ends, but in terms of when it would happen to my education. They would always ask us to read out loud. Like they would go around the room and we'd all be reading the same book and they would ask you to read a paragraph. And I just remember having like full blown panic attacks when that happened. Like it was so bad. Like I wanted to like run out of the room or hide under the desk, you know, things I would, things that I, I never ended up doing. What I did end up doing um, was reading very slowly with extra pauses i would i would i would actually read very like i said very slowly which is probably what a speech therapist would recommend among other things but i mean kids don't understand like kids kids have tunnel vision for insecurities i mean we we all know kids will say the darnest things i mean they have a whole television show about it so when kids notice that you're different whether it's a birthmark whether it's anything i mean make up whatever example you want depending on the personality of the kid they'll either mock you for it or they'll just kind of bring it up in a playful way or worse they'll imitate you like i don't know what i sound like i mean um but yeah going back to the classroom 
example. I mean, reading out loud was, I think, one of my first traumas concerning speech. That and the telephone. I remember being in middle school and like having my mom call my friend's house because I wanted to speak to them, but I would be too afraid if their parents answered. I, I mean, and it's, it's just hard to remember all these things um, because it's just very painful. Like I have all this trauma surrounding speech and movement, things that people really, things that people take for granted, which I feel like makes my point harder to understand because people, people underestimate how complex movement and speech are. I mean, these are complex systems in our, in our brains, in our bodies. See, like I'm, I'm having speech blocks right now and it's just really frustrating because like I'm not I'm not consciously doing it. It's like I don't know. I would compare it to like if you're trying to write a sentence with a pen and paper and you keep putting periods and like you can't help it. Like it's like that. Like that's what I feel like my brain is doing to my vocal cords. It's putting periods where I don't want them to be, which is highly annoying and just going back to the the impact this has had on my life, I just remember, you know, when the teacher asks, if, you know, if anyone knows the answer for a question while you're in class. And, like, I remember thinking I at least knew the answer and wanted to raise my hand but not knowing if I would be able to get the words out. Like, like things like that. And I, I know, especially for this part of the video, there are people that know what I'm saying. Like, I know I'm not the only one experiencing this. I mean... Um, I used to think I was the only one experiencing this, which is extremely traumatic. I mean, can you imagine having having a problem that like you kind of have to hide because people don't under people don't understand it, and it's not severe enough to warrant the attention of a speech and language pathologist. Um, and I feel like what further adds to my case that I'm not making this up. Um, because I am worried that people will think that is that my mother stutters and my mother has tics and my dad I think had tics when he was a younger kid and he outgrew them but my mother didn't really outgrow any any of her symptoms um she still stutters to this day I mean not not a lot like not severely but like she'll she'll I would say it's mild to moderate depending on this depending on the situation um and she never got help for it it was never something i really ever brought up to her um but it's something that i noticed as i got older which i think is common we all notice things about our, our parents that we may have overlooked when we were younger um it's it's one of the wonderful things about growing up um but you know these are things that really impact my day-to-day -day life's pr it it makes me avoidant like i i like okay like i can't i don't even know if i'm I, okay look i think that i'm a i think that i'm an introvert right but i don't even know because i don't know if i'm being avoidant because of my insecurities or whether i truly am an introvert like i don't know I, it's very hard for me to tell because I can't differentiate my personality from illness, from, from the symptoms that I experience. And I mean, one of my commenters kind of raised this point. Like, how do you separate, how do you separate Tourette's or how do you separate a speech disorder from your personality? And I mean, I, I think, and I mean, this is, you know, this is like a whole separate video, but I, what, what I, I think the, the answer is, is that, I mean, you almost kind of can't in the sense that that, I mean, depending on how young you were when you first experienced symptoms of a disorder, it, it shapes your personality. I mean, it shapes how people treat you. It shapes, it, I mean, it shapes so many different things from the quality of education that you may receive because people may treat you as an outcast. Teachers may treat you as a troublemaker or they'll think that you don't care about the class because you're being quiet. But in reality, you're too afraid to speak because you might you might st stutter you know it, it's just it's just very frustrating and most people don't un most people can't relate to this and the people that can relate to this are are in hiding so i feel like i have an obligation to speak 
about these issues because I mean I'm speaking about issues that people I don't think I don't think I'm exaggerating here. I think I'm speaking about issues that people kill themselves over. Like I I would not be surprised if there were people, you know, kids or young adults or anyone over the course of a lifespan who just the, uh, the accumulation of the of not being able to speak fluently and having tics and I mean the social isolation that comes with all these things it leads to mental disorders it, I, don't, I don't think it's the other way around I, I mean and if it is it's not relevant to this video what, what I'm saying is that people feel very alone in these issues I mean this isn't like a like I said earlier on, people underestimate, people take their health for granted. People take their ability to, to speak fluently. People take their ability to control their movements for granted. We're all one head injury away or one illness away from not being able to breathe automatically, from not being able to speak properly. I mean, these are all, these are all systems in a brain that could go wrong. So I just want to make that point. Don't take your health for granted and don't mock other people for things that they can't control. Because I can't tell you the pain that I've ex experienced having people mock me for my speech. Like I would be in the middle of a sentence and I would pause because I was having a speech block. And then I would finally get the word out. And then that person would be like, you really forgot the word but or like you really forgot the word grass like uh, uh, and, and you know it's just people people can be people can be assholes and i mean if, if you're a younger kid watching this video i would recommend to you to first of all maybe i shouldn't use the word asshole if you're young don't curse but i would advise you to learn how to deal with difficult people at as young as of an age as possible because these difficult kids some of them don't out outgrow their difficult personality. Some of them turn into adult um, bullies, you know? So if you're a parent watching this, teach your children how to stand up for themselves. Um, teach them, teach them um, personal boundaries. Teach them protection. And, you know, most of all, teach them that they can come to you and you won't judge them for their problems. And that you'll listen to them and you won't guilt them or you won't shame them because shame is highly toxic especially for children um because their personality is developing but you know so going back to how, how this has affected me over my over the course of my life i mean from middle school to high school i hated reading out loud in high school i would as a matter of fact i would purposely forget the book that we were reading for English class so I wouldn't have to read out loud and that was one of the tricks that I would do um, which is ridiculous because my <laughs> father is, was an English teacher and he would be ashamed if uh, if he heard me say this I mean I've always loved to read like I, I like reading I just don't like reading out loud um, so yeah but so I would forget the um, book at home and then the, the teacher would either skip me or she would force me to read along with someone else. And that sucked because people said I read like a robot. An actual girl that I liked said that, which uh, wasn't the best feeling. Let me uh, tell you that. But uh, whatever. <sighs> Let me not say anything mean about that. <laughs> That's why I uh, pause. But anyway, um, so yeah, she she said that I, I read like a robot. And like, why do I read like that? And like, just all these like, like offhanded mean comments. I, it's very tempting for me to be me to, for me to be mean back to them, but I try not to do that. But anyway, now, you know, my superhero origin story and the uh, name, why I named my channel, Mr. Move and Speak. I can't believe I talked about this for 15 minutes almost. Uh, anyway, thank you for all the people that have reached out. Um, please be patient with me. I'm very busy at the moment. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Please like my video. And I hope 
everyone has a happy new year. Thank you.